Okay, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Waitley Select Board on uh, September 9th, 2020. First item on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes of the August 26th, 2020 meeting. Any comments, discussion? I don't have any comments on the minutes. I would move to approve them unless you have some things you'd like to, to change on them. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll second your motion to approve. Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Fred, yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants. Yes, they were in the packet that Brian sent. Any uh, qu comments, questions? Uh, no comments for me. No. Nothing, that looks okay for me. Okay. Uh, public comment. Anybody on from the public that wants to talk about anything not on the agenda? The only one, well, we have Wayne, I guess, but we to talk about anything else? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, uh, first scheduled appointment is at six o'clock, which we're on, on schedule here. The water department to provide an update on outdoor water conservation restrictions, the uh, manganese filtration project, and the water merger project. Okay, which Wayne. One you, yeah, which one do you want me to start with? The restriction, I guess I could start with that one, ended on the first. Right. And yeah, I mean, everybody, it's kind of that time of the year where it's cooling down enough and not everybody's watering their lawn some more. So, I mean, we have the pumps are actually shutting off normally for about six to seven hours a day now. So they're actually getting a break finally. Mm. And which part, the manganese filtration project, which part of that you want? The filter project or the booster pumps we're getting? I start with one of those and go to the next. <laughs> we'll want to hear about both, I'm sure. The manganese filter project, they did come back. It was, what, maybe three weeks ago now and put the SCADA system in, which is the system, the computer system that monitors everything down here. And there's a few little things to finish up. They got to finish up, but Again, it's trying to get a hold of our engineer to coordinate that. That's kind of the hold up on that. But the project, I would say, is probably 99% done, the filter project. The booster pumps for this plant, The it was last, let me think, maybe Wednesday that we got a letter that the D. The DEP, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, rejected, I guess, our application to put them in. What, I guess the, the big reason they rejected it was they want you, they want you be able to pump your peak demand and by putting two booster pumps in, if one of them goes down, they're worried we wouldn't be able to supply our peak demand. So I guess all it really comes down to now is we got to re redo the permitting with them, resend it back in and switch from two pumps to three pumps. So if one pump breaks down, the other one will turn on and we can still reach our peak demand. Which we can't reach right now without the boosters. Is that right? Right. Right. So they rejected it, an improvement, because it wasn't good enough improvement. Right. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure, you know. Uh, right. I mean, I had plans. Yeah, I mean, we we're going to go with the two booster pump unit, and then I was going to get the third pump in that and just put it on the shelf for if one did break down. I mean, you can probably replace it in a half an hour, but they actually want it physically built into the system. So it'd be just, you know, I mean, we just got to go back through, change the permitting stuff. And, but I think we're actually this time, 
they want more of a in-depth, what do I want to call it? A, they want to see what I guess each of our well pumps can do through each filter. More of an in-depth like pump curve, what the well pumps themselves could do. So hopefully, it sounded like when I talked with the engineer, we'll probably be doing that next week. And then hopefully, maybe by the end of the month, we'll send the permit application back out to the DEP again. Because, I mean, right now we're not, I'm actually not too worried about the booster pumps. Over the winter, we our volume of water for the town goes way down. I mean, it'll go down. Now, usually in the winter, we might pump. 50 to 60,000 gallons a day instead of like the summer months, if we could pump 350,000 gallons a day would probably be enough, just enough. So as long as, you know, I mean, we're hoping we're going to keep it moving and we, I want to get, we're hoping to get these up and running and in by, I'd like to have them in by March. So it gives us a couple months to make sure everything's working good before next June, July, August come around, the big months. That's where those stand. The center of town booster station, last week I sent them an email this morning, but they didn't get back to me today. As I knew of last week, they were, they had most of the application permit done. They were just finishing up the drawings to go along with it. So maybe I'm hoping maybe by the end of this month that permit will be off to the DP for their review and approval, hopefully. Other than that, that's where we stand, I guess. Wait, let me go back to the uh, water restrictions that we had in place for what, a couple months, two or three months. Uh, yeah, when we put them in June, yeah, so June, July, August. So just to just to tell people that we're affected by it, that we actually save or use less water. I guess it did make a difference. It made a, I mean, a huge. I bet you, since we went under water restrictions, I don't know if it was quite half of what we were pumping but pretty close. Yeah, I mean, we're, we would probably need it, before we put the restriction on, we would probably needed to pump somewhere between three to 350,000 gallons a day. And it took a little while. It took probably two weeks for like everybody to get used to it or whatever and comply with it. But after the first couple weeks, we went down to around probably two, 220,000 a day. And now we're down, the last week of August, we went down to maybe like 175 a day. Oh. It's almost in half. And can you say what people were doing less of, what, not watering outdoors or lawns? Watering or? their lawns. Watering, watering their lawns. the lawns is the big thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you've seen, you know, I mean, just driving around, you've seen a lot less of the lawn sprinklers come on all the time. <clears throat> Is he frozen? Fred, we couldn't hear you if he said something. <laughs> he froze a little bit. Oh, yeah, I got the message. Oh, you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got the notice online that the, the restrictions go through September 1 or until a, a extended by the water commissioners. Uh, is the water commissioners going to put something out to say that is that is ended, the water restrictions? and? Yeah, I guess I can write something up or Amy or that can put it on the internet and I'll pull the signs out that I scattered around town. Okay, and I think it would be good in there to, to just say. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
It, he froze again. <laughs> and no, it didn't make a difference. It wasn't just uh, something yeah. on the paper, but. Uh, yeah, no, it did. It made a huge difference. Okay, so I think it's good to tell people that they appreciate it and it made a, made a difference. So next year, if, you, if we have to do it or in the future, that uh, they're more than willing to, to cooperate again. So Yeah. Okay, so it will stay online until, uh, I guess, the Commissioners Act to, to terminate it and Brian will post something online to that effect? Yeah, we'll have a meeting... I think we got to have one next week at the beginning of the week. So they'll do it then. Okay. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to add that as part of the water merger, uh, myself, Wayne, Nicholas from the water district and Mary Stewart, we had a virtual meeting with mass DEP on August 31st to let them, um, to let them know what our plans were, you know, the steps that we've taken so far, and to have a discussion about the steps that we need to take to get us all the way through the water merger. So I found that very useful. Um, and I think Mass DEP found it very useful. And I, I know the water district found it very useful because we, we got some ideas as to what to do with um, the decommissioned wells that the water district currently, well, the active wells that will be de uh, decommissioned by the water district. Um, so it was, it was really useful to have that discussion with them. So, so they're not blindsided, although I think they know that this project's been out there for a while, but we're, we're trying to push it a little bit harder. Um, so it was good to hear what they had to say. We had some questions about once we actually make the physical connection, how do those two, what's the relationship between the water department and the water district while they're both existing and whose responsibility is it to, for the, for the, for the reporting, for the billing, for all that kind of stuff. So it was, I found it very useful. Um, so. Okay. So for the merger is the only thing, well, the major thing that needs to be done is the pump house, the pumps. Don't, don't you, is the connection made to the system or you no. do some work, but. We no. just, all we really did was more or less just get their main across Christian Lane. So when this, you know what I mean, this complete streets thing, the sidewalks and stuff, right. that way if any of anywhere we needed to put the pipes, we weren't going to have to dig up the new blacktop and stuff. Okay. Yeah, you know I mean, so really all we did was run their pipe across the street to that, the road going up the cemetery, yeah. just to get that part of it done so we don't have to, destroy anything that gets up there done up there now okay so the the water line is actually to the what east of the new sidewalks the water line actually goes we went across we went across chestnut plain road yeah. up to the that'd be what the north entrance of the cemetery and then I don't know, maybe up the cemetery 30 feet or so. Yeah. But on, on, the other, on the other side, where is it in relation to the new sidewalks being built? Uh, to me, I don't know where the whole main is, but to me, part of it looks like it's right underneath it. <laughs> oh, is that good or bad? <laughs> huh? Is that good or bad? Uh, Long as a pipe doesn't break, it's fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Me, I don't know. Me, maybe I would have moved the sidewalk a little bit, but I mean, yeah. I mean, if something breaks, I don't know if it's, you know, I mean, I don't know where their whole main, the only part of the main I know is down by the center school where we connected and extended it. All right. And that part looks like the sidewalk sits on top of it. Okay. Yeah, from there, from there up, I don't know where their main exactly goes. Okay, it's probably down at least what three or four feet. The main? No, it's like five, five to six. Oh, that far? Okay. Yeah, it's down there. Oh, okay. Okay, so it sounds like you've been busy and got a lot of activity going on, and keep up the work. <laughs> 
stick, keep on the engineers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Those <Yeah>. engineers. <laughs> I know, I know. What do you do with them? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I got, Joyce. You have anything else for Wayne? Or no, no, I uh, I I like Fred's suggestion that we kind of communicate appreciation. Um, the last the the, the scoop went to the post office today, so it's too late to put a little note in the September scoop saying, "Hey, thank you for this." And I think that's really yeah. the, a PR move. Um, there will be another scoop in December, though, and if that's not too late. Maybe I can put Wayne on the list of people who get a little, um, a little note in advance that says, yeah. "Hey, if you want to put a little article in and let me know." Um, so I can do that if you want, and we can put that out in the scoop as well as I think you said Brian would put it on the website. And um, if you're mailing something out to people between now and then, that might be another good opportunity to, um, to, to you know, just put a, a short message like that in. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Wayne. For All right. No problem. Being on. Okay. <laughs> Moving on the agenda. Our next appointment is with uh, Chief Savine on uh, considering an uh, appointment of a uh, part-time police officer. Jim. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> as you guys know, I came to you. Um, I think it was at the last meeting we discussed the shortage that we're having for uh, part-time officers and that putting some of our officers in a position where they're making, they're, they're getting <laughs> many hours so I needed to um, look at hiring somebody. So you guys gave me the okay to, to hire for two. Uh, we're, we can only do one at a time. So we're just starting off with one. So this is the first person that I'd like to uh, recommend for appointment tonight. Mm -hmm. um, my name is uh, Zach Zachary Levino. Um, <clears throat> so everything I, he filled out our 23 page application. Mm -hmm. Everything checks out as far as his background check certifications. Um, there's no issues. I know this individual. I've known him for for a couple of years. As I told you at the last meeting, I actually sponsored him to go to the part time police academy. Um, so he is looking for work, and I think it's a good opportunity for us to get somebody that can um, we can depend on. He's local. He lives in Hatfield, so that would give us um, availability on short notice and um, for details and extra shifts and things of that nature. So, uh, so that's what I'm looking to uh, see if I could uh, request him for appointment for part-time police officer. So if he's part-time for Waitley, can he be part-time, say, for Hatfield or other communities? Yeah, we have no restrictions in our policy right now. Um, I, tend to, I tend to look at how many departments somebody is going to try to be with. And my, we used to have a policy that said no more than two departments. Um, that that kind of restricted us. <clears throat> but I still like to stay around that two, two or three, at the most three, um, departments for part-time officers, but usually we can we can get somebody um, as far as this person goes. He's only it's only going to be Waitley right now, so he doesn't have another department, which makes it which makes it nice because he can commit the majority of his time to us. Okay, yeah, I read the, the application and stuff. I'm trying to remember what what is he doing for full-time employment right now. Uh, right now, he doesn't have full-time employment. <clears throat> He's enrolled in uh, at Westfield State University. Right. He's working on his bachelor's degree. I think he's just about just about finished with that. He's got a couple of classes. I think he's finishing up his last few credits. Um, so he's got a couple of classes that he's doing online right now. But um, other than that, he's he's looking for full-time employment. Um, he's taken the civil service exam, state police exam. Uh, just nothing nothing has come up for him as of yet. So this kind of gives him an opportunity to to get some experience, get in, get the, the training. And I'm not sure that he doesn't have any uh, um, plans on leaving like right away, but 
again, if a full-time option comes up for him within the next year or so, we, we may be looking again. But that's that's kind of the nature of the beast with our part-time officers. Is we just don't know how long we're going to have them. We don't have contracts with anybody or anything like that. So sometimes we keep them for years. And I think we've got a pretty good group right now that we've had. Um, we have one officer that he was only he's only been on for just over a year. But everybody else has been on for five years or, or more currently. So so that's a good thing. We can keep them. <clears throat> okay. So being part time there's no there's no benefits. Correct. Right. No paid benefits from the town. And that was the other thing is some of our part time officers, because they were working so many shifts, um it it was kind of getting to the point where, you know, I, I was starting to hear from Lynn um, about the number of hours that they're working. Some of them were working you know, 40 hours or more <clears throat> um, in a pay period. So if we get to that, that half time mark, then um, on a regular basis, I think that that's when it comes into play, whether or not we should be offering them benefits, but mm -hmm. um, there's no money in the budget for that right now. So but they have the benefit of working with the awesome team at the Waitley Police Department and in one of the nicest towns with the nicest town administrator and the most sensitive wow. select board you could ever come across. Well, those are the obvious benefits. Yeah, right. You were, you were really talking about the paid benefits. Yeah, just the official stuff. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, do we need yes, to uh, take a vote and make a motion? Well, then uh, I would move that uh, the police chief hire this guy is uh, put him on our part time roster, please. So what we've done, what we've done in the past is oh. get the preliminary appointment pending the results of the drug screening and physical. So mm -hmm. that would be the next step in the process. So oh, OK, if so everything maybe came back OK with that, then the appointment would go through If For some reason, something came up on the, the drug okay. screening or the physical then the appointment. So, oh, OK. So as a procedural thing, do we have to make two separate appointments or do we just move to appoint this uh, young man to the, to the roster and knowing that our procedure is if he fails one of these other tests, that appointment won't go through? I think your appointment could be conditional on the passage of a okay. um, drug screen and physical. So if those happen, then it's automatically the appointment is good. Okay. Well, then I move we appoint uh, this officer contingent on the drug test and physical. Yeah, second the motion. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Okay, Jim, you can uh, proceed with this individual and hopefully get another one. Do you have other applicants looking? I, I do. Um, the, the problem, it's not really a problem, but the the problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that, um, so it's pretty much Don and I. We're, we're the full-time field training officers. So um, mm -hmm. we, we kind of share the duties as far as training goes. And if we put two people on at the same time, that, that's a little bit too much. It takes too much time away from our other duties. Um, so we try to just do one at a time. So once, once he gets trained, um, then we would be looking at, at somebody else, if, if need be. <clears throat> um, if, because we're still we're still waiting to see if we're going to lose one of the officers that I was kind of anticipating. Um, I haven't had any final discussions yet, but if that does come up, then we'll probably be proceeding probably within the next month or so. Um, but mm -hmm. that would that wouldn't be any time within the next meeting or or two. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Okay, sure. Um, uh, I know it probably varies a bit from um, from time from situation to situation, but roughly, um, how long is the initial training period for a new officer like this young man? So the initial training for the for our police department? Uh, yeah, yeah, like is it gonna be a matter of three or four weeks? And then you might be able to think of, a, of a, another new part-timer or is this a matter of six months? Um, so <clears throat> so we have our, our detailed official field training program is 350 hours. Um, within those 350 hours that that covers everything from from beginning to end. So even though it sounds like 350 hours, if we're able to get through topics um, quicker, or if he already has training in certain areas, then we can kind of go through that a little bit quicker. It doesn't usually take us 350 hours. Um, okay. We're usually able to do it within 
within a month. So we have four phases to our training. The first couple of phases all happen at the, at the police station. And then our next phases happen out on the road. Um, so mm -hmm. that those okay. last, last two phases are usually a couple of weeks. And the first two phases could be anywhere between a, a week and a couple more weeks. Oh. Okay. All right. No, I just, just wanting kind of, uh, kind of a, a ballpark. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further questions for the chief? I I just wanted to raise one thing. I don't know if it's okay. not it's not really on the agenda, but I didn't have another time slot on there, so I just wanted to check and and see if um I just wanted to bring up the the new radio um, oh, issues yeah. that are that are coming up, and there's a meeting that's actually tomorrow night that I'm going to be attending. Um, so the the mm -hmm. MOUs have, have been sent out, and it's. Pretty much, just so you guys know, and it's a lot of information there, but it pretty much mirrors the same um, MOU that we have currently with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for the radio system. There may be a couple little minor things because it's a statewide system, um, where ours is currently is just a county system, but they use the same language from from the current MOU. So there's not really much different there. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna go over everything in detail with us tomorrow. Um, but I just wanted to see if you guys had any questions on the, the MOU, if you've seen it yet or not. I think Brian, you sent that to us, didn't, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did not take a, a close look at it yet. Yeah, I haven't. They're I haven't. still looking at, there's still, if we can get the MOUs all signed, get everything in, this is the first, the first step is this meeting. They're still looking at the end of the year or you know, sometime in December or January before the subscriber units being the radios um, would actually get sent out to the departments. So that's still the timeline that they're giving us is by the end of the year or the beginning of uh, beginning of next year before we'll be up and using the radios on the police side. Anyways, fires still has some time. <clears throat> okay. okay. That's all I had. Okay, kind of as a, maybe as a segue to our, our next item, uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, directives. Uh, Jim, you have anything you want to say? Uh, observations, comments on how it's going in town? Uh, things that are good or bad or whatever? Um, <clears throat> I, we haven't really had many, many issues. We did have a, an incident over the weekend that we were dealing with. It turned into a, a trespass situation where there was a an individual that went to a local farm stand and wouldn't put a mask on so they wouldn't serve them so they decided to proceed to touch all of the the uh, produce that was there just to, to kind of be a you know a difficult person about it so um, so that person has been contacted and advised that they cannot um, come back they didn't want to pursue any issues they just wanted them to stay away from the farm stand that was that was really all that 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 came of it but um, as far as the, the COVID stuff, anything else, we haven't really had any, any issues with um, seeing a lot of gatherings or, you know, we haven't seen the car shows, things like that. So um, there, there really haven't been any, any issues that we've had to get involved with. We did have our uh, peaceful, I don't really want to call it a protest. It was more of a standout where um, this yeah. past weekend, people were holding out signs, just supporting um, one political side or the other. Um, we didn't have any any issues with that. We had one call, but it turned out to be um, kind of a false. Somebody called about a, a car that was parked where they shouldn't have been, and when we got there, there was no car there. So, but that was the only issue we had with that. So, that was that was good. They all had their their masks on and social distancing and all that stuff. So, no no other issues. Are, are there still car shows on on State Road? No. Every nope. week, I see cars go by. I'm just curious as to where they're going. But yeah, so had there was one that was Northampton has one. I think there's one in East Hampton. Hatfield had kind of a makeshift one, but the the cruise nights that we typically had on Friday nights at the um, at Tom's Hot Dog Stand, they they were given some guidelines and some uh, restrictions from the Board of Health so they could run their car show. They ran the first car show. They didn't meet the requirements. It violated some of the restrictions, so the Board of Health uh, basically shut them down and said no more car shows. That doesn't mean that they don't occasionally have a couple of people gather there with their with their cars. I haven't seen more than three or four cars, and they just go and have their 
have their lunch or dinner and then they then they leave. So it's it's no groups gathering or anything like that. But, so that's that's on hold. Okay. Okay. Thanks for all your your, your comments on that. Yeah. Not a problem. Moving on, our next item is a COVID nineteen state of emergency. Uh, we've got uh, two directives here. Uh, do we need to do anything with either one of these, Brian? Um, I don't have any recommendations for the first one or the second one in your packet. Um, we have a proposed reopening plan for the for the library, and that would be um, a move towards appointment only in person browsing. And this was this uh, plan was put together by the library director, um, mm -hmm. and it's been reviewed by the it's been reviewed by the board of health. Um, so I just wanted to give the board an opportunity to comment on it. Um, my initial thoughts are, I thought 15 minutes might be a little bit too quick of a time for browsing in a library. Um, so I might suggest to, that they maybe make the appointment a little bit longer than 15 minutes. Um, I noticed that if you're, they're going to sanitize and make a computer available to people who want to use it in the computer times a half hour so I might suggest that it, they just be consistent in terms of what they're trying to do there um, yeah the, my, my first thought about the computer time was half an hour what can you do on a computer in half an hour I can hardly check my email in half an hour um, so it, to me it was it, it seemed okay that it was longer than the browsing for books time yeah. um, but uh, I, I don't have a good idea for how many people depend on those computers for things like checking their email on a daily basis or, or whatever someone might want to, to do research on there. Um, so I didn't have any problem with it being a half an hour um, other than it sure wouldn't be enough time for me. <laughs> but um, yeah. I assume that they took into account what patrons generally need. And uh, so I would trust their judgment on the, on the time. Yeah. And has the Board of Health commented on what they think of the plan? Or I know you said they, they've seen it. Yeah, um, the comments, and I, I actually made the change here. It was in the, well, the third full paragraph that um, it was, it, the, the original phrasing was masks are encouraged. Uh -huh. um, so the, the, the change from the Board of Health was to say that masks are required mm -hmm. um, unless a patron has a medical exemption, which coincides with, with state guidance and, and our local guidance. Um, there's not going to be, so any toys in the child room will, will be picked up and it's only going to be the top floor of the library that will be open. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the questions that I that I have written here is, it says the downstairs will be closed, and I assume that includes the restrooms because the restrooms are downstairs, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other part that I saw, it said um, there will be hand sanitizer for patrons to use when they first enter the library, but that doesn't sound like they're required to. And I don't know if that Board of Health missed that or if the if the data says that you know um, transmission by touch is no longer considered to be a big risk um, but it seemed to be like when I go to the grocery store they require me to use hand sanitizer now the library is a different situation than the grocery store but that if I that's the one question I have that I don't know the answer to maybe somebody else here does Okay. And the, the question being, the question being, hey, are they going to require people to use the hand sanitizer? Oh, okay. You're just saying that's a question, it's right? It's going to be there. If you walk right by it and don't use it, that, that right. it would not be breaking this plan. The so this plan does not seem to require that right. patrons use it. It only yeah. requires that the library make it available. And right. I'm questioning whether that's um, that's an appropriate thing for the library 
given that they're going to go in there and sanitize all over the place, um, it would probably reduce the risk that they miss something if the people sanitize their hands on the way in. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't probably eliminate the need to uh, wipe down high touch surfaces and so on. Um, but that, to, that was like the only little detail that kind of um, stuck out. I like that masks were required. In the well, the first version I saw anyway had masks yeah. required. Well, let me ask. Related to that, did did we ask people to use hand sanitizer before they came into town hall to vote? Was that required? Yeah, I believe there's a please use hand sanitizer sign. Yeah. Mm. That doesn't sound like required either, though, does it? Nope. Yeah. So, and, and maybe that's completely appropriate. Um, that I'm, I'm not speaking, I'm not on the Board of Health and I don't necessarily have the right expertise. But I, I guess I would just want to um, ask about that detail. And maybe if Fran were here, if I went to a Board of Health meeting, they would tell me why that that's, that's actually okay. Yeah. We can find out. But yeah, as, as long as that is settled, and it doesn't necessarily have to be settled by me, um, <laughs> uh, I, it, it seems like it's a reasonable plan to try and actually, you know, do something with our library, and that people are really missing it. Yeah. Um, in conjunction with this, I was talking with Bob Smith earlier today, and they also would like to spend, it's around $2,100 um, of the CARES Act money. Um, they requested that they be allowed to purchase, he called them I-Wave system or I-Wave filtration systems for their mini splits. Um, mm. So it, I think, I believe it's, it's a filtration system that can be installed for mini splits because oh, okay. with the mini splits that they have, I mean, I believe they're similar to the town hall where they just recirculate the air within the town hall. Yeah. Well, <laughs> within the library. Yeah. Um, the air from the library recirculating in the library. Um, so without any sort of filtration at a level that could filter out any yeah any virus particles. So. Yeah. Oh, I see. So I see they want $2,100 for this? It was, uh, they have eight units. Uh, oh, okay. Seven units at three hundred dollars a piece. Okay, and that's installed. I assume. Then. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, and then that makes sense because they're about a hundred and forty dollars per unit for the filter. Um, yeah. And I'm assuming they might get a couple of extra, and installation might be a. Okay. All right. That actually seems reasonable. I, I, in, I mean, if we think about it, they're. Think about the building. There, there, there's really not great ventilation. That's right. Um, with with right. bringing with bringing yeah. in fresh air, so yeah, it seems like that would be a good, um, a good option, a good uh, investment for them. Yeah, it seems appropriate to CARES Act as well. Okay, looking at what they proposed here, there's nothing talking about outside congregating or meeting or. Do we need to say? Should there be anything on that? No meeting or congregating outside or staying six feet away if you're meeting outside? I, I... Well, I think those are generally, generally applicable rules. Um, I mean, I think the focus of her plan was, was to focus on people coming into the library. Right, inside. Um, but, but we also, we also should have a, uh, uh, a little bit bigger of a conversation um, about outdoor gatherings on town property because uh, that came up over the over the weekend I think on Friday when Joyce and I were having a conversation about the town hall um, yeah. yeah I think you're I think um, we need we do I think you're right we need a bigger conversation about that and there's no reason why that conversation can't include the library as well yeah but was that for people going to the use it at town hall, or was that people? For no, the like people could walk up to the town hall 
and you know, kind of the the well meeting theirs for lack of a better word. And um, do we? I mean, do we want to? I mean, we can't to some extent um, prevent people from just walking up there and talking to each other if they happen to see each other in front of the town hall, or somebody's walked around back side of the town hall, and somebody else is going out there to look at the view. I mean, those are just random people meeting, but you know. Could someone have an outdoor meeting there? Um, our current policy doesn't technically forbid that, but it does not seem to be in the spirit of what our meeting policy is. So we might just need to see if that, um, uh, if we can make our existing um, use of town buildings, uh, you know, the, the order that had closed the town buildings for the most part and then reopen them partially we should probably take a second look at that uh, and address the outdoor spaces. Okay, but to do another, I guess, thing to look at. Do we know what the uh, what the post office has come up with? Do they also only allow one person in at a time? Do we know what their post policy is and post office? I, I don't use that one. I, I I don't the one in South Deerfield. I, I don't. I don't remember anything other, other than the six foot maybe tape on the floor, but other than that, there's no guidance or restrictions or limits. Do we I have one? Remember, in, yeah. in, I've been there a few times. I don't remember seeing signs, but what people's behavior was, if someone was in there, then the person waited outside until they left. So one patron at a time was right. the practice, but I don't remember if there was a sign on the door saying that. There, there okay. was no sign restricting more than one. They just had the lines on the road, on the, uh, on the floor. Yeah. <clears throat> for the six feet. Yeah. But, uh, but when, I, like, for example, I went in, no one was there. But when I went out, there yeah. was a patron waiting outside the door specifically. And I know he'd been there for, uh, for a little bit before. He could have come in, right? But he didn't. So that seems to be the practice. Yeah. Um, but maybe, I don't know, we don't control the post office, though, do we? No. We don't get to tell them what to do. No. So, okay. Okay, so we'll look at outdoor gatherings in what, a future meeting or so? What, what, is it, what are we doing? We or just, take, I think we leave this in Brian's hands to uh, come up with some suggestions and could, because he's in touch with health department and um, then we go from there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this. I, I guess the the question arises, like Joyce was talking about, um, in, in for non town government groups. Let's use let's let's use that for yeah. for a second. Non town government groups. So, so the, so the town doesn't really have any control over the activities of the group. It has control over the property. Um, are we would we allow those groups to meet on town property? Could they meet in the parking lot outside the town offices here? Could they meet at the town hall? Um, when Joyce and I were talking about it last Friday, um, you know, we have gatherings, groups because of youth sports. We have gatherings at at Hurley Field. Right. Um, and it's in uh, the outdoor space, so that it's in the outdoors. You're right. We're talking outdoor space. There are different concerns than for the indoor space, which you have much higher concerns for COVID nineteen. Yep. Well, maybe the outdoor concerns will go away in another month or two or three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I hope so. I mean, in terms of in terms of public meetings of the town. You know, we're requiring them to be recorded and them to be done virtually so people can participate um, without risk of being exposed uh, to the virus. So um, I think we have a good reason for continuing uh, public meetings of, of town boards and committees. Um, there's not really that restriction for meetings that we don't necessarily have a requirement for. So, yeah. 
Well, and you know, I'll, I'll bring up, we had a side visit for one of the marijuana uh, farms uh, last Saturday. You know, we, we all stayed six feet away, wore masks. Nobody touched anything or received anything. So I guess we were practicing everything mm -hmm. we were supposed to do. Yeah. There was a town function. It was on the website, a site visit. So outside. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I'm, I'm wondering if for the, this is for the, for the order on town buildings, um, if we could amend the, the paragraph above, if I point to it, you can't see it, so it's, I shouldn't point to it. Um, I can do my I can do my cursor though. Second bullet. The SY tickets to the library will offer curbside pickup and drop off library materials, um, as well as um, something along the lines of as well as um, in person browsing by appointment. Okay. Period. Please contact the library for more information. Okay, so that's what we have to amend to our policy in order for this reopening plan that we were just reading to um, be able to move forward. Uh, yeah, I think it. I think it would be good to have consistency with those. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have to put all of. I, I printed on yellow paper. Sorry, we don't have to put all of this. Uh, <laughs> their plan doesn't have to be in here. Just that. Um, uh, the well, the phrase you just said, drop uh, curbside pickup and drop off of library materials and in person browsing by appointment. Yeah. I, I think that, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to, to take that risk at this point. Okay. okay. That sounds good to so, me. Uh, do you need a motion? Um, yeah, I think it would be good. Okay. Uh, well, I move that we uh, add to our building policy. So I need to get the right words here. Our um, reopening town buildings to the public for limited hours and appointment only directive uh, to the library section and that the library will offer in-person browsing by appointment only it already says, please contact the library for more information. So I think that's all we have to add. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Fred, yes. Great, and I'll, I'll convey our comments to um, Cindy, the library director, and the Board of Health, and get some clarifications on their, on their plan. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Priority project list. Under old business was to discuss a priority list of projects for the remainder of the calendar year. This calendar year, as we've Push this off a couple meetings. Uh, no, <laughs> we should make some have some discussion before the end of the year. I guess. <coughs> yeah, I uh, agree. Although it does say it was updated in um, July of 2020. I wonder if that's a typo. Oh, the draft was updated. Oh, the draft was updated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably about when we started thinking about discussing it. <laughs> yeah. um so really the reasoning behind this is it 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 lists a lot of the a lot of the projects the the, the larger projects not sort of the day-to-day -day stuff that happens um that is happening in the town and um it's listed under um priorities as as categorized by the select board it, it's helpful to me mm -hmm. um and it's helpful to other staff to to know what the select board's priorities are so that we can, you know, focus our efforts and, and push mm -hmm. harder on some projects than others. Some are dependent on things outside of our control. Haydenville Road, the first one under the medium priority, Haydenville Road, Mountain Street reconstruction. And we're working on that. Um, 
if myself, Fred, and, and Keith are working on that. We're trying to, we've got it on the, the transportation improvement plan for federal funding, but that's not until 2025. Um, yeah. So that's not going to get done in the next three years. Um, but what can be done, and we actually have a, a lot of work to do until until that happens, um, convincing Mass DOT that they need to fund the rest of the design. But not, now mm -hmm. I'm getting down into the weeds. That was just an example. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's if there's things that the board wants to wants staff and the town and departments to work on that that aren't listed here, um, I think we should list it. Um, or if things should get moved or uh, moved up or down, I can uh, under the higher priority. I can tell you. Wayne talked about the manganese treatment system. Um, we're going to be closing out that project with the contractor. I think they might have one more visit to the site um, to do a couple of small things, but that's going to come off. Williamsburg Road Bridge Replacement Project, that's ongoing. That should come off in the winter. Yeah. Um, water systems merger. It, I found the meeting with MassDEP extremely useful. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of like it's, there's a lot of things here that are underway and seem like they're going to end in the next few months. Yep, Chestnut like Plain Road should end in the next couple of months. Poplar Hill Road resurfacing and drainage should end in the next couple of months. Yep. The 250th, well, that's gonna happen when it happens. Um, <laughs> we're not changing that. That's right. That starts yeah. in not too yeah. many months, right? Right, right, it's basically next year. So that's uh, not in the next couple of months, but in the next, like this time next year, um, we might be just be able, to say, be able to say, well, that one's going to be done by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing, I, I guess, I don't know if you call it high priority, that it seems we're spending a lot of time on is applying for grants for related to the COVID-19 or uh, other other grant programs the state's coming up with uh, not only complete street what's the 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 one similar to complete streets I mean I know that takes a lot of time or some time yep. away from other activities uh, should that be I don't know listed somewhere here grant applications or funding or <clears throat> yeah I, yeah they options, they or? pop up. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, it seems like grant applications is something that we're, we're kind of constantly doing. Um, and to put it as a high priority, it just seems like that's an item that's just gonna be there. It's not a project that you're gonna end, right? Because if it's not grants for COVID-19, then it's grants for you know, anything that we really um, qualify for. Yeah. So I, I would, see, I would not have thought to put that on this list because I think everybody in the town offices, we know they have a chance to get free money for us that that is, that's in there. I think it's in their job description, really. I so, love free money. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that, uh, so I, I didn't think that because it was a project list, not just a priority for what our employees should be doing, right? It won't encompass all in, in priorities, but as far as projects that come and go. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I guess it it, it does. I guess what all, all of these are, are projects that are ongoing in in the town, and I, I guess I would like to see some direction we give to the board gives to Brian as to what he should should focus on. Yes, he's involved in all of these, but to a limited degree, and some is more information and keeping track of, of what's going on or, or, or keeping other departments involved. What should we be telling Brian to focus on his, we call it free time, I guess, or other time? <laughs> yeah. he has, uh, COVID ate all my free time. Yeah. Right, uh, right. Uh, the, 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 the one that, to me, that comes up Top of my list is is the town office renovations. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because in the top priority, the higher priority ones, many yeah. of those are crossed out. But I 
I didn't think there had been much done in the way of town office renovations. Yes. Well, so there, can you tell us about the ones that have not been done yet and where they stand. Well, that doesn't sound good. No, just kidding. There, there, um, so for the, for the town office renovations, um, there really hasn't been, for a lot of these that, um, there hasn't been a big push to get those done. There hasn't been a, mm -hmm. a, a big need that's arisen that, that kind of brings it to the top. Um, and a lot of times we're always chasing deadlines and we're trying to, um, we're trying to react to when these projects, when, when certain things we can do for certain projects yeah. are available, are available to be done. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times we're, ch we're, we're meeting deadlines and there hasn't been a big push for the town office renovations at this point. Yeah. Um, but it, I, it would be something that's, that's good to get done. So um, can you remind me what, um, what kind of renovations were we thinking of? Because uh, it was like at least a year ago before we last talked about these. And we didn't have a pandemic and all those other things as well. But can you remind me like structurally, like what were we trying to accomplish with the renovations? So the, the original work on this predates me coming here, but it was to, it was to separate the space um, what I would say behind Lynn and Janet's office where the copier is now mm -hmm. there's sort of that long room um, that was to divide that into three or four offices with, with some type of semi-permanent dividers mm -hmm. um, and create additional office space there and we're going to we're going to separate out um, mm -hmm. you're going to separate out the assessors and maybe from the water department although a lot of the water department stuff has moved uh, down to the office at the pump house. Um, Board of Health, cemetery commissioners are all in that shared space right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, okay. they're not really, there hasn't been a big push really. Um, I, I know Cynthia, the assistant assessor would, would like to get moved out of there. Um, yeah, so it sounds like it's something that we, we've been muddling along. Um, it would make things work more efficiently and better if we did, got that project. Yeah. Um, but given all, everything else and we had to you know, cut the budget so much, it's understandable that we didn't make this a priority, um, all the things being considered. Okay. Let me give you a little background and, and what's happening with that. The, Municipal Building Committee looked at that space when we were deciding on the future of the town hall and and some of the members come up with with, a, with an office plan that the committee looked at, Municipal Building Committee looked at. We even looked at what kind of offices should we be looking at, uh, our walls, floor to ceiling, offices or just partitions in between in that whole big room. We went to Yankee Candle main office, looked at their setup, whether they have both types of, of partitions and, and what was acceptable. I, I guess we made a recommendation from the, the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, there was a floor plan developed. I think John Robleski had some uh, plans, uh, schematics of different options of setting that up. Uh, dividing that room uh, that that is available. So some of, some of that is, information is is available. I think we even got quotes for for the partitions. John had one or two companies that he's familiar with gave us quotes for the partitions. Of course, then we, we got that wall that put up. That was part of it. I think John was involved in putting that wall up to divide the the space for what we needed versus the rental space. So. So uh, that was put up there in kind of recognition of the plan to, to uh, divide up the rest of the space on the other side of the wall that we, that we were gonna use. So, so there, there has been some groundwork. Uh, the, the biggest Im impact I, I think is, is the, four, the four offices that, that share that one space, <clears throat> excuse me, in the back 
I don't think they all have their files in the one office. There's no room in there. I don't think Cynthia has all her files in there other than what's in the, in the uh, vault, I, I guess. I think there's still some uh, files uh, in that big open space. Uh, that and also at times it's uh, the privacy of, you know, if assessors are meeting and water department or board of health is there at the same time coming and going. Uh, it's not the best uh, scenario, I, I guess so. And, and maybe this time a year with the, with the COVID-19 going on and, and, I don't know, contractors may be looking for work. Uh, maybe this is an ideal time to, to look at something at, at, at the town office renovations to see if these uh, uh, companies that were going to put up partitions and office furniture, they had layouts, they had plans, they had costs. Uh, somewhere within the state, we're local. I guess we can call them back again and, and, and take another look. Uh, it, and that was one of the, I think the reasons we, we sold the, the building to the town, to the town people to vote on it because we needed that additional office space. Otherwise, if we confined it to what we have today, it may have been a different story on whether we wanted to buy the building. So I, I think it's, it shows the voters that we really needed that office space and this is how we should be setting it up. I think it's time. What have we been? Two, you've been two years, I think. Almost going on two years we've been in the building. Uh, yeah, it, it is working. Uh, we can manage, but I, I think it could be better. Mm -hmm. I think we need to show the residents that what we paid for and how we can make it better. And that's why I, I, I would like to see Brian's put some additional time into, into, into uh, starting that up again, that project up again. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the only thing remaining from that, from, from the original plan would be the, would be the partitions, because we, we put up the wall that runs perpendicular um, from behind Lynn's office and the, the one that, that, that cuts off the back of, of Lynn's office. Right. Um, we have the vault, so, and we have the vault installed there. Um, so I think it's just setting up those, setting up those partitions, I believe is what's, what's remaining. Right. Uh, I think I agree we should keep that on the high priority list. And, and there is there is money in a budget. We approved at a town meeting some was 115000 for that. And I don't know if part of that went for the, the vault or not. Or um, Part of it went for those, for the permanent walls that have been put in already. Right. So but I think there's still a uh, substantial amount left to do the renovations, the rest of it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we keep that on the high priority list. Yep. Um, again, this one's been around for a while. It, it really predates me, the driveway permit revisions. Um, my understanding is that this came up when, and Fred, maybe you recall better than I do, but um, when um, Pine Plains Estates was being uh, subdivided and there was some issues about driveway setbacks from property lines. Um, yeah. So I haven't heard a thing since so long time. Um, something we could focus on if it's needed. Um, but I haven't, it's never really come up. Yeah. Yeah. That, a long time. That did kind of evolve from Pine Plains Estates and yeah, John Robleski was involved uh, in reviewing the the application form. I guess we have now. Keith was, and I guess Keith did check with with Mass Highway on uh, on uh, certain requirements. I think for like State Road and, and whatever, uh, and made some some revisions that he thought were, were necessary that would improve it. Uh, I think the, the, the big item that's not in there and I see kind of happening all over town is is people that, that have a driveway that want to make an, an improvement to it by either relocating it or making it wider or different surface. They don't need a permit. That's not part of driveway permits. 
And that's one thing Keith, I think, and I wanted to see in there, if you're gonna make a re major revision, you should have a permit. Because some of these going closer to the property line than they really need to be. And I think that was one of Keith's problems. Uh, major problems was the revisions to existing driveways. Mm -hmm. Uh, Keith has, has all the, the background on it, uh, maybe once the, the uh, construction season comes to an end here, we can bring this back in, in the winter months and look at it. Yeah. Okay, but it sounds yeah. like it still should be on the um, higher priority list, just it's right. not likely to be something we do until Keith has more time on his hands than this during the construction season. Right. Okay, that seems reasonable to me. Okay. Um, I'll skip down. Um, capital planning, that's something that I think we just want to do a better job at. Um, just overall, um, trying to identify capital planning needs. Um, I sort of feel like that's improved over the last couple of years that the uh, Capital okay, Planning Committee met more than once, I think in this past year, um, and yep. made priorities. I sort of feel like their report to the to the Finance Committee had more meaningful information to it. So I, I think we've at least improved. I don't know if we've got it, you know, we don't, I suspect we don't have it perfect yet or never will, but I think it's substantially improved over what we were doing years ago. Yeah, we're doing good. Um, we're meeting the capital planning, capital improvement planning committee. Um, we're meeting more than once a year, and uh, we're doing we're doing site visits um, yeah. to the departments yeah. and the facilities that make requests. So we do a really good job with equipment and vehicles. Um, um, we I, I think one of our areas of focus we would uh, we would want it to be. Um, a little bit better proactive planning in terms of um, building mechanical systems and and um, what to do with buildings and identifying, you know, planned replacements and those types of things. Um, but I, I think it has gotten a little a, a little bit better. Um, yeah. Fred and I have had conversations about um, about whether it's worthwhile to get formal building assessments or to start sort of in doing our, the committee doing informal building assessments um, to just get you know, estimates on the age of the, of the, the elements of the building. Um, yeah. So that's still so something. I think that should probably stay on the priority list. It sounds like there's specific improvements you want to make to the capital planning process. So yeah, that yeah. should probably stay there. I don't see a reason to move it or lower it or anything like that. Yeah, I think, you know, like Brian is saying, you know, we, we did make significant improvements in the last you know, two years on it. And we've mm -hmm. got people on the committee that understand building operations and are involved in, say, maintenance of buildings. And which wasn't necessarily true in the past. It was, it was other, yeah. other people, I'd just say, uh, and no sense of, of what was needed or the condition of it or the seriousness of it. And, and I, I think we're, we're moving in that direction. Maybe we need to look at some future infrastructure like Brian, Brian is saying. And I, I think, you know, we got enough, we got the right people or we get the right people in town that have expertise in that to help us. That that was a, the main problem before. And, and I think we have some of that. Maybe we need some more. The yeah. other option, you know, I, I see Deerfield and Sunderland have done similar, but they hired a contractor to do it for thirty to fifty thousand dollars to analyze all their buildings. And I'm been saying to Brian, we can do that. We can do that ourselves. People that are at department heads should know the condition of their building. If if not, well they talk to contractors in town or other people and and hopefully they will guide them as to what needs to be looked at in the future so you know i think it's, it's a start and the next budget season we'll, we'll see if we can do do more on uh, future needs of the buildings 
I mean, the, the one, you know, we just got through remodeling town hall. Was it two years? Mm -hmm. That's not going to sit there for 50, another 50 years before we do a remodel. You know, every 10 or 12 years, you got to paint it. Just like you do a house. Yep. If you keep ignoring it, pushing it off, <laughs> it gets more expensive. So I think we should keep capital planning on this list. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Comcast, FCAT hookup. Um, we've yeah. gotten we've gotten stonewalled by FCAT. Amy has. So I think she's emailed our Comcast contact okay. saying, "Hey, what's what's going on?" And then they You're say, by, "By Comcast or by FCAT or both?" Comcast. They say, "Oh, the engineer that was working on it's retired, or um, um, the guy we met with, Joyce, I think retired." I think it was on the uh, way out anyways. The only one who knew how to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. we're, st we're still working on that. Again, that's that's necessary to, to, to be able to broadcast mm -hmm. live from the conference room we don't currently use, but hopefully yeah. we'll again one day. Right, right. Well, the sad so thing I, there is it's not like it, the, the, the money's already there. So right. yes, we should keep pushing on this to whatever extent we can. Um, because we will return, we shall return, right? Uh, that's the plan. Um, center school reuse or sale. Uh, that's the next step. There. That's the RFI. Yeah, that stays, um, it stays on that high priority list. Yeah. Yep, two fiftieth. I assume that's going to stay high. Yeah. Um, What's with the workplace safety? Why is that? There? Oh, I, I um. Well, that's ongoing, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be ongoing. I mean, the biggest thing was the the biggest, most obvious thing was the mes was the highway garage, um, and okay. um, we had that informal inspection. They identified some of the things that needed to be changed, and the, the biggest thing, um, the what uh, I don't like this term, but the what was hanging fruit, and the biggest thing to to do was um, to discontinue use of the the mezzanine. Um, at the highway garage, and we did that. Um, um, with uh, providing Keith with the uh, to get the storage container and move that and move the, those materials out and discontinue use of that. Um, but I, I I would imagine if 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 we've done if we did audit so um, at the other buildings, I'm sure we would find things that need to be um, brought up to brought up to par. So. I think that's something that we'll, we need to continue to work on. Okay, but is it a high priority? I mean, no, we've got to comply with the law. So to that extent, it yes, okay. it's got to be a high priority. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as it's listed now, so we'll go to medium, Haydenville Road, Mountain Street, reconstruction. Talked a little bit about that. Um, I mean, we're kind of pushing it by default because it's going to take we're just in the process where you need to get money for design and keep pushing uh, fast dot um veterans monument that that's that's mm -hmm. quite honestly that's kind of stalled out with the with the veterans group um oh. th they got to a point where they had uh, pretty close to a final design and then i think there was not necessarily agreement um, mm. on that. And then I think um, some of the members got focused on the, hey, this, I, I, now that it comes to mind, um, on the, the library lift project, which I, I don't have on here, um, the ADA compliance project for the library. Um, I think some of the members got sidetracked with that and put their efforts into that so that's something that we're going to have to pick back up or I'm going to need to encourage them to pick back up. Um, so I made a note that we should figure out where to stick the, the library lift project. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we have any thoughts about that. Well, this is a lot of it. Um... I mean, we, we've got to get some external funding to help do that. Yep. Um, so, 
Mm. I mean, I think it, uh, if funding looks certain, it could go into a high priority, but just because maybe the high, the high priority is trying to find funding for it, but I, I'm sort of, I feel like maybe that should be put in at the medium medium priority, mostly because we, we need it to be high enough to keep looking for grants and supporting the folks who are trying to, to get those grants. Um, but we can't do any action until we get grants. So and I sort of feel like the high priority items should be things that we can actually do something about. Um, and that's something that the thing we can do something about is to uh, you know, look for grants and support the library folks who are trying to get those grants. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine with me if you want to put it in the medium, medium priority. Okay. Yeah, it's another one of those projects where we find there might not be a lot of work and then we identify a grant opportunity and then we apply for the grant, we get the grant, we do procurement, then we do the administration, so it yeah some of these things are kind of hard to predict yeah um so i'll add we'll add that there um the mayo property reuse that's <laughs> has been on there for a while yeah um, yeah. yeah i think some uh, you know we we had it on the market for a while it didn't go anywhere we could put it on the market again to see if anybody's interested in buying it i suppose but and so it seems like uh, something we're looking, but we haven't really talked about what are alternatives to selling it. Yeah. And um, so I don't feel like that needs to go to a high priority. I feel like the center school, it's, to me, it's a lot more important to settle what we're doing with that property right. than, than the demise. So I'm happy with that being in the medium priority. Yeah, that's, I agree. That's where it should be, yeah. Okay, um, really, the personal policy, uh, personnel policy revisions and um, comprehensive job description are are really kind of internal things that I want to try to keep moving. Um, personnel policies should really const really be constantly up Updated. changing to adapt to the new laws and, and new circumstances. So, um, I. I kind of have that pegged in my mind as is something that when we get closer to the the winter and fingers crossed, hopefully COVID stuff slows down, um, is something that yeah. we could look at. The cemetery stone rehabilitation phase three, that um, that was funded at this past uh, annual town meeting. Um, I talked with Darcy, the uh, Darcy Tozer, the one of the cemetery commissioners uh, we talked two days ago. Um, our goal is to get that out and get that ready for to have who's ever doing it start in the spring. Um, Tritown Beach is uh, something that Jonathan really wants to um, focus on, I guess, in terms of it being an underutilized asset. Um, to me, that's kind of in the planning phase as to the planning and exploration phase. Um, yeah, that was the one project where I thought, you know, when some of these things that were sort of mentally crossed off, when they're really crossed off, when they're really done with the manganese and really done with uh, these various things that are crossed off or soon to be crossed off the higher priority list, that was the one thing that I thought maybe we should do a little bit more looking into the status there so that we know what uh, what could be done with it. Because I know there's all kinds of rumors about who really owns what. Uh, does the town own the land? Does the Tritown Beach um, Commission? I don't even know if that's the right word. Do they own the land? Who has the deed? Like, like that sort of research, I think, would be good to do. And that seems like a, a medium priority item, but I can see that one moving up once that background is done, because we can't really make any decisions about what to do until some of these fundamental questions are settled. 
So I, I guess I'm, I'm happy with it being at the medium priority right now, but you know, the, because the, the kinds of things we would need to do are really research and establishing ownership and those sorts of things. But that could move up if, you know, depending on what that, that research shows. Does that make sense? That it would still be in, a, in, in the medium category. I think a start to, to do anything there would be for the, the Tritown Beach Committee, Commission, whatever you want to call it, which is Waitley and, and Deerfield. And I, I guess the Rec Commission, it, it's a recreational area. Them, them two commissions get together and talk about it. I don't see that happening right now. Uh, the only emphasis I see is safe in the Rec Commission. Uh, I think that the two need to need to start some discussions and, and see what they're willing to do, who can do it, how can it be done, who's going to manage it, that, that kind of stuff before we look for improvements, I, I guess. Yeah, right. And I think before people can actually sit down and discuss what are the possibilities, they got to know, like, really who's in charge, who owns right. the land and controls it. So I think it's even one step further back from those groups trying to come up with ideas of what to do with it. Yeah. I think we gotta know who's in charge. Yeah, I agree. Who's really in charge. And yeah. I don't think we really know that yet. No, I agree with you. Yeah, okay. And maybe that's that should be the emphasis is to yeah. call it Tritown Beach coordination or committee or, or something if we want a committee to look at it, another committee of the two committees, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the final one is um, open space and recreation plan update. Um, that makes us that makes the town eligible for uh, a lot of grants from the executive office of environmental affairs e whatever e o e a. Um, a lot of the a lot of the outdoor recreation grants require to, the town to have an updated um, OSRP. Um, so at the last annual town meeting, uh, residents voted um, half the cost of the open space and recreation plan, and the uh, the, the hope was is that we would apply for that. Um, it's either small communities conservation assistance grant. I think it's small communities conservation assistance grant that would pay for the other half. Um, and I'll follow up with Jonathan on that, but that's something that um, the newly reconstituted uh, open space and rec uh, committee, I think could focus on. And then for the lower priority or longer range, um, regional police has been on there since I've started here. Um, Highway department building, because um, that's we know that's not going to last forever. Um, Hurley Park dugout issue, um, land purchase, and then South County Senior Center long range facility planning was added last time as well. Hasn't the dugout issue been resolved? <laughs> no, the I, the. My understanding is that the dugout issue relates to um, the uh, not the sideline, like the the it's first baseline the between okay. uh, the first baseline of the field closest to River Road. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I remember. Yeah. Okay. And that property, that that hillside, and almost right up to the field is 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 still in private ownership. Private, yeah. Okay. So they couldn't. Put in a put in the dugouts there. Okay. Um, there's been talk. I don't think there's been much formal um, discussion about uh, additional land purchases. So purchasing the land. Um. I guess it would be to the south of Herlihy. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, behind that house. Um. But that really hasn't got too much traction. Uh, the, the Recreation Commission doesn't have a chair right now. 
Um, they still have all their members, but um, I think it would be good if, if they could get reorganized a little bit mm -hmm. from what I hear. Um, so I'll, I'll have a discussion with Jonathan about that. Okay. Um, and the other thing that, as we were talking about this, uh, we're wrapping up the hazard mitigation planning, but uh, the similar planning effort that's going on right now is the MVP planning effort, municipal vulnerability preparedness planning effort, um, which will make us eligible for um, MVP grants. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, we should probably, I think it might be worth adding that to the list somewhere. Um, in terms of, I mean, we have a planning grant to pay for FERCOG to do it, uh, you know, to take the town through it. So it, it's lined up to happen. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to um, equate higher priority with we're going to get it done um, <laughs> necessarily, but um, it's also ongoing. Okay. Well, that, yeah. I mean, the idea. I don't mind I, putting it with, like, put it where we put the open space and recreation plan update. Does that make sense that it kind of goes in the same priority level as, as that? Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a similar framework as we need to do a plan so that we're eligible to apply for, for state money. Um, the conversation. The conversations that I've had with Keith in terms of uh, MVP funding and potential projects, um, they seem to, the state seems to be funding a lot of culvert replacement projects. Um, so that would be, I think, our goal would be to try to replace some of the some of our old and deteriorating culverts. Um, and Fred, that that reminds me. To, uh, uh, Christian Lane intersection with routes five and ten. Yeah. Well, can I throw something out? Uh, yes, as please. A, as a possible project to go, um, probably medium priority, but I'm willing to talk. Um, <laughs> here and there, we've had um, discussions about um, municipal solar. And with the aggregation that we have now, there's sort of a little less financial incentive to be a big electricity producer unless we can use it to offset the electricity we're using, especially the, the places where we're using it the most. So for example, the pump house is one place where we do use a lot of energy. And the laws are such that like, putting solar on the school doesn't necessarily make as much sense because the school makes a lot of energy when they're not using it and municipalities can't do that metering and all of those sorts of things. But one thing that's changed in the last couple of years is the um, battery storage. So that um, uh, a place like that, the pump house where even, you know, if you pr were producing even a little more than what you need in the past, you basically have to give that away, right? But with battery storage, you can really, you can do something that actually the energy companies like, which is to even out your load. And you can really offset your uh, electric bill and long-term do a lot of savings um, because there's a lot of incentives for getting battery storage out there. You know, for just that reason, it's really good for the grid. Um, so I'm wondering if we could look into, um, I, I don't know what, whether to call them small, medium, or large projects, because projects is projects. Um, and I know there's limited space at the pump house, but could we look into uh, some kind of a solar with storage at that facility as our biggest electricity user? Um, and maybe at the same time, we'll learn enough to tell whether uh, other kinds of solar with storage on municipal property for municipal purposes would actually work out. I mean, we, we I think there's um, things have changed up in the last couple of years that I don't think I'm up to date necessarily on what uh, what would be a good thing to do. But maybe putting it in the medium priority um, means that when we have a little time, we can start investigating 
what what kind of projects might be appropriate for a town their size. Um, you know, we've we've already reduced electricity rates a lot with the aggregation, but um, we still use a lot, and maybe we can do something about that. Yeah, I I I agree, Joyce. I, I I've been kind of promoting that for a few years that we should mm -hmm. be looking at solar for for town buildings and. Yeah, you got the pump house, but you also got, you know, around the, the highway garage, either not necessarily building that building, right. but you got other buildings, other locations around the highway garage or even on the school property. I mean, to yeah. put in uh, solar for, for town right. school use. I mean, other other communities are doing it. And I, I guess I just, and I see us just sitting there looking at it. I don't know. No, I, I, I don't agree with you, Fred, on that. There, that um, that we're, that we're just sitting around not looking at it because we have been looking at it, but there are problems with just putting a bunch of panels on your school roof as a municipality. So, um, and when we looked around at the town to see where you could put uh, a larger array, one of the places was just south of Tri Town Beach, where we don't know who owns the land. Right. So, so I think it's something where there needs to be a little more groundwork being done um, in advance. And I, you know, I've done what I can kind of on my own time, but I, I don't, um, I'm not making enough progress. I'm not happy with the progress I've made. Um, so I think if we put it in our project priority list and probably most appropriate at the medium level at this point, then we could, we could actually put a little bit more time on it. Um, but I mean, I'm, I would still volunteer my time, but then it, it, this gets on you know, on Brian's desk as well. Okay, that, I guess that's that's great. If somebody is looking into it and has done work in the past, I, I guess I wasn't fully aware of that. Maybe maybe the, mm -hmm. the message isn't getting out what's being done or looked at. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I guess I don't see that. That's why I, why I guess I made that comment that I, I, I don't see much happening or hearing much happening. Uh, yeah, you could put it in a medium medium priority. Uh, the other thing, before we got into, into that, Brian mentioned the, the intersection, Christian Lane and, and State Road. Uh, you know, I've been advocating that something needs to be done there, uh, not only State Road, but also in Christian Lane, and there's, there's right away available to do some of that and it's related to the culvert issue there and also wetlands so it's a it's going to be a uh, detailed project to get anything done there uh, i you know if the town doesn't push to do anything there i, I don't see anything happening i think i, I mentioned it a couple of times at uh, furcog meetings the planning organization there and even to the state and they're well they're aware of it it's not a high priority yet, but I, I think we still need to have that on our agenda somewhere. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. medium priority right now. And and when we talk about other state projects, I guess it, it gives us the, the end to say, well, hey, what about Christian Lane? Or when we talk to FERCOG, where does that stand now on your hazardous intersection project? It gives us that opportunity and to do that, and I think to still emphasize the need to do something. So I would say put it in, I guess, medium priority. All right. Okay, anything else we need to discuss on this list? I think for the time being, I'm I'm happy with the discussion we've had, and we can always bring it up, bring it up again. Right. Okay. So hopefully that'll give you some uh, direction, Brian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so will you, Brian, you add a few changes we made to this and just send it out to all of us so we have a final copy? Yep. Okay.
Okay, moving on. Uh, I guess we're down to town administrator updates. Yep. Um, so at the last meeting, uh, Don Skrosky made some comments during the public comment section about the uh, railroad crossing and it being noisy and, and uh, a problem. So I think it was a few days after that, Keith had a meeting with um, some of the representatives from Pan Am. And uh, I won't belabor the point, but he feels like he didn't get anywhere. Um, so he was going to reach out. He was going to try to find some contacts at Mass DOT Rail Division um, and try to um, have some conversations with them. So that's still uh, that's still a work in progress. Um, what he's what what he said and well, I think what he said in the meeting was that it appears that the the rail, so the the metal piece is the, is the highest point in the crossing. Um, and there may or may not be appropriate um, rubber pieces that were installed around it that might um, that might soften the noise. Um, so that's um, still going on. Uh, Chestnut Plain Road sidewalks and crosswalks. So they started um, they started some of the paving today um, in some of the new crosswalk locations. Um, so that project, that project continues to move forward. Um, Williamsburg Road Bridge replacement, that project is ongoing as well. Uh, a little less visible, but nonetheless, it's still happening. And um, Keith is still in his and his crew are still working on Poplar Hill Road, putting in the catch basins, and then that project will be resurfaced. Um, and then. I also forwarded the board um, a letter from Greenfield, and this was um, in reference to the regional um, CDBG. Uh, there's some other letters there, community development block grant for the micro uh, micro enterprise assistance, uh, micro enterprise assistance grant. Um, so that was a regional application that was submitted by Greenfield. Um, that was awarded. It was $690,000, um, for Greenfield and the, the communities in Franklin County. Um, so in, in this assistance is targeted to, uh, what are called micro enterprises. So that's, uh, businesses that have five or fewer employees and who one of the, one or more of the employees actually owns the business. Uh, so it's really targeted at at very small businesses. Um, the, we'll put the, we'll put a news item on the website. Um, there's a link that businesses can click on if they want more information and they want to, um, and they can submit, they can submit their contact information to FERCOG, uh, not FERCOG, City of Greenfield. And um, when the application is available, it can be emailed to the, um, to the business. So I think that's about it. Brian, on the sidewalk project on Chestnut Plain. Yep. Right now I see the activity from Whaley Inn North. Is it gonna it's still plan on going from there south to the church on yep. both sides? And yeah, on the West. West side. Thank you. Just the west side. Nothing on the on the east side. From Haydenville Road south will be just the west side. To the church. To the church. At this point, yep. Okay. And that other project uh, to complement complete streets for we talked about sidewalks at the school. That's still being worked on? Yeah, that's still being worked on at this point. Okay. Yep. Oh. And we, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I don't think we mentioned this last time. Um, the town was successful in getting a, um, um, too many, too many uh, acronyms. Um, 
CESFP grant. That's the coronavirus supplemental funding um, the fire department applied for and was awarded. Um, it's just under $50,000 for, um, for some training equipment, um, some, some technology equipment, um, some technology training equipment, um, some uniforms, respirators, and um, uh, funds to purchase two message boards, two electronic message boards. Um, those items were on our capital plan and we were happy to quite yeah. crudely to get somebody else to pay for them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause they'll certainly be useful. Um, we felt there was a need definitely when we were trying to scramble to reschedule town meeting and voting locations and all that. Um, it would, it, it'll be a nice tool to have to, to put in different spots around the community um, to get the message out. And hopefully we miss people that we don't get with, the website and robocalls and word yeah. of mouth and things like that. So it'll be nice to have those. Who will be responsible for managing them? That's a good question. Um, that's a good question. It came from the police, from the fire department, right? So. Yeah, we'll put that chief's truck to use. Yeah. I think the police should do it because they're on this Zoom meeting. Right. Yeah, at least, yeah. Ask yeah. the recruit if they know how to how to uh, do advertising on message boards. My, my guess is more than likely we'll be we'll be taking care of it. What that sounds like a volunteer? Yeah, it does what, sound like a volunteer. Do you have any more detail on the message board? What 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 size are we, are we looking at? Three by five, bigger, or what? You know. Uh, I. I'd have to look it up. I think it was three by five. I think there were three by five signs. Electronic battery operated? Solar operated? Solar. <clears throat> solar powered. They're trailer units. They have solar power so we can leave them out for longer periods of time. Um, we're, we're actually looking at the possibility of getting um, one of the signs as a combination radar sign that does traffic counting as well. Um, we, we don't have numbers on that yet as far as um, the cost, how much more it would be if, if we can make it work with the grant or not. <clears throat> but that, that may be a additional option. Pretty much the same sign, just with a, with a radar unit attached to it as well. Uh, Jim, what you were, I think you were giving money to buy, what, two uh, speed limit signs? We weren't, giving any, we weren't giving any money. It was on the capital plan. Okay. But that was uh, that was put on hold. So we we have no money for anything except for radios this year. So the money for repairs and improvements at a police station, the money for the signs, painting, all of that stuff is put on hold. That's right. You are using one on on Chestnut Plain, aren't you? Yeah, we we currently have a sign that's about 15 years old. It only lasts for maybe two days. Um, so we put it at one end. We brought it back to um, charge it back up and we're going to be putting it. We're, we're reluctant to put it in the construction area because we don't want to get in the way there. Yeah. Uh, so we, we moved it further south where um, I know Joyce had discussed some, yeah. some of the complaints were further south on Long Plain Road. So we, we may put it in that area, but just facing the other direction. So we had it up there facing for the northbound traffic to see their speeds as well turn around and have southbound traffic be able to view their speeds as well. So that's that's probably going to be going up um, for this weekend. So okay, that's a little bit more that's a little bit more difficult to get two people to it takes two people to, to move it. Um, mm -hmm. put it in a truck or put it on our trailer, hook up our trailer, get it over there. So it's it's not very convenient to move it, but yeah. um, and the fact that it only lasts a, a couple of days is a little bit challenging as well. But now, that yeah. store, does that store data as well? It does not. All it does is display the speed. Display the speed, okay. Yeah. And it weighs a thousand pounds. Yeah. 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 It's a, already claimed a few a million pounds. <laughs> Nobody will steal it then, right? Eh? 
<laughs> we, try, we try to find a location where we can chain it to a, a sign or a guide wire, guy wire or something like that yeah. for safety purposes. Because somebody you could almost guarantee somebody would steal it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to cost more to dispose of the battery. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, any other items we need to talk about that are not on the agenda? Anybody? Anything else? No, I would move to adjourn. Okay, I'll second, second to move to adjourn to our next meeting is September 30th. Uh, roll call, Joyce? Aye. Aye. Fred, yes. Okay, meeting adjourned.